नहीं नहीं मैं दूंगा ना आप बोलेंगे पहले हाँ ठीक इंट्रोडक्शन होगी एक दो सवाल उनका जवाब कॉमन दे के फिर Friends, uh, welcome to this uh, third day of the National Education Policy 2020 Implementation Professional Development Program. This is the third day of the conferencing. This is the third teleconferencing, a chart-based conferencing interactive with you. We have with us Professor Chandrabhushan Sama, who is Director, School of Education of Indira Gandhi National Open University, and who has also been, besides past almost 35 years of experience. He has been the chairperson of National Institute of Open Schooling. I will come back to Sarmaji within a minute. You had a few questions uh, which you put in the dashboard. So let me respond to those common questions and then come back to this. The program started on 9th and it will continue up to 14th. Those who have got the message, those who have registered on the Samat platform, all may not have got the message. 31st till August 31st, from August 15 to 31st, those 6,400 plus teachers who have joined this program. September 1 onwards, we will immediately announce the next batch. The next batch will start. So also the third batch and fourth batch and so on and so forth. So therefore, those who have got filled up in the, in the summer platform, uh, after 31st uh, of August, you will get message for the second verse very soon. This is point number one. Point number two, that some of you have uh, written that uh, when we will get the link to the test of the discussion forum, which is 30% uh, of weight is 15 multiple choice questions, and the end program is 70%, and uh, we have uh, 35 multiple choice questions. So the test will open, as I'm told, on the 12th, that is tomorrow. Tomorrow the test will open. So you can continue to attempt the tests or you can wait for some time, a few days. It will be open up to 17th, though the program ends at 14th. We will give you time three days more, up to 17th, to complete your test. And by the time you could also go through resources, download those, print and video, save those. You can also save those for your future reference and so on and so forth. There was another question that, uh, because print, you will be studying video, you will be listening to teleconferencing like today that you are joining. If somebody is not able to join, uh, we will by tomorrow, we will put on the SOIM website with a heading on the, on, the, on the first page itself called the home page, that these are archived uh, conferencing videos um, till uh, today, we have uh, 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 three completed. This is the third one, but there was a test run also that will be put there, which was conducted by myself, and uh, which will be put. So even if you have missed it, you will get the videos in your SWIM platform. And you can also download those videos. You can go through in your leisure time. So no problem at all. Nothing to worry about that. And uh, how to join uh, the program, you have to register in the Samath platform, as we have advertised from time to time. Let me read out the, the URL, the link, so that you can jot down if you have a pen and paper. As you know, the HTTP colon uh, slash, two slashes, all small letters, I-G-N-O-U hyphen N-E-P hyphen P-D-P dot Samarth S A M A R T H dot in I N. So this platform, if you if you get into, you will register. You will upload your I card or your letter from your college principal or the head of the institution, and uh, quite a few other. Uh, um, you have to fill up uh, the, the the fields, and uh, you will get a message for, uh, which is being done by our respective regional centers in different states, and you will get a message that now it is clear, you are registered, 
and after you are registered the data will go to show him and you will get a message that when the next best starts and you will get alerted to that so with these uh, let me one more question that uh, the assessment duration 12th tomorrow it will open it will continue up to 17 so anytime you feel like you can uh, you can uh, go through and uh, some of you have written that we have not joined 9 10 11 conferencing no worry at all those will be archived and you can also go through in fact if you uh, uh, put this uh, keyword in the youtube platform you will also get in the youtube platform they're available free all over the world because by this time this is done this is uploaded to youtube platform we are taking a little time to upload to the summit platform you can access youtube also so um, with this let me invite uh, professor samaji to speak on this time to speak on autonomy and governance so uh, professor samaji over to you thank you so much professor panda thank you namaskar aap sabho ka swagat hai indira gandhi rashtriya mukta vishwavidyalay ke is karyakram ke mein jo विश्वविद्यालय अनुदान आयोग के तहत चल रहा है आई एम सो वेरी ग्रेटफुल टू द ऑर्गेनाइजर्स फॉर इनवाइटिंग मी एंड टू आस्क मी टू स्पीक ऑन ऑटोनोमी एंड गवर्नेंस ऑफ हायर एजुकेशन इंस्टीट्यूशन ऑटोनोमी इज द बैकबोन ऑफ एजुकेशन स्पेशली हायर एजुकेशन एंड सो दिस इज वेरी क्लोज टू द हार्ट ऑफ ऑल दो आर सीरियस एकेडमिक्स एंड are in the planning process of education i must say i have been part of the writing of the national education policy and you will find that autonomy has been built into the whole system right from the beginning i will today confine myself to talking only about autonomy in higher education referring to the school education sector from time to time but then i will confine myself to talking on higher education and autonomy and governance but before i really take up the issues that have been dealt with uh, let me ask a question what is autonomy whose autonomy i must make a comment right at the beginning autonomy is not anarchy autonomy doesn't mean anarchy and what i mean by that i'll come to later autonomy of the learners autonomy of the teachers and faculty autonomy of the administrators of the institution higher education or the systemic autonomy what do we mean by autonomy let me take one by one we have we have been talking about a students autonomy so let us examine what students want from the system for all these years you will find we have very strict selection of subjects like if you are a student of science then you are only allowed to take physics chemistry mathematics or biology and very few other combinations if you decide to go for humanities and social science you are not able to or you are not allowed to study any paper which is within the discipline or department of science like a student who wants to study economics is not allowed to take mathematics or physics because that belongs to the science discipline but these are all about the established disciplines that we have in the universities i must tell you this policy intends or has a vision darshan we don't have a real translation for darshan in english to is neeti ka jo darshan hai wo ye ki 2040 ka bharat aisa ho jisme 64 kalaon mein hamare bacche hamare vidyarthi aur fir hamara desh duniya mein sabse aage ho so the issue is not only of physics chemistry biology economics it is also about arts dance painting martial arts and all different areas fabric design textile in which we were the best aapne upanishad padha hoga vikko ka naam sunenge vikko duniya ka mana hua kumhar tha jiske banaye hue mitti ke bartan duniya bhar mein mange jate the aur duniya bhar mein jata tha aisa kaise ho paya unless and until we develop 
the science of or the studies of uh, pottery in schools as well as higher education how would be able to create individuals who are the best in the world in these areas what we have been calling chausat kalaye bharat mein duniya ke best sangeetkar natakkar kaise banenge agar hum inko vidyalay aur vishwavidyalayon mein nahi layenge to ye sari cheeze जो विद्यार्थियों के स्वायत्तता का प्रश्न है द ऑटोनोमी ऑफ द लर्नर हैज बीन इनबिल्ट एंड इफ यू रीड द सेक्शन टेन पॉइंट ट्वेल्व वॉट इट हैज इट सेज इज ऑल न्यू एरियाज विल बी इंट्रोड्यूस्ड एज क्लब्स आई मस्ट मैंशन हियर I have talked about these areas on uh, various platforms, and people have asked: From where would we get the teachers? From where would we get the experts who would do it? So, the policy was aware of it, and policy had in mind. So, what it says is: Towards the beginning, when we start, we will have clubs in the institutions. The students will start working in these areas, like it has been mentioned in ten point twelve that. it will have uh, clubs for all different areas where students would like to work like creative areas uh, let me read uh, the areas that have been mentioned in 12.3 uh, like social domains and inside and outside formal academic instruction such over time such activities could be incorporated into the curriculum that first few years these will remain as clubs and then they will become a subject which will become part of the curriculum how it will become part of the curriculum i will talk about it when we come to the autonomy of the institution so you can see the road map initially all different areas of knowledge would be open to students even if there is no faculty member perhaps the students can start working on these through clubs once they have done substantial work they would be able to convert it into curriculum and some of them will go, get into teaching of these subjects by the time they graduate the obvious question would be how would colleges do it now i am shifting to the second part uh, how would colleges or institution do it what the policy says is that all colleges and institutions of higher education will get graded autonomy if you look at autonomy in terms of institutions lead 13.4 freedom to design and develop curriculum how will that happen institutions will become autonomous which will be done in a phased manner depending upon their contribution and their performance some of the college will get autonomy but some would be working under the mentorship of the universities so the autonomous colleges will be free to decide and design the curriculum for these subjects and also perform and take these as 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 subjects and teach them how would that work autonomous colleges will have a board of governors read chapter 19 where this has been clearly delineated that every college will have a board of governors the head of the institution will be heading the board of governors like if 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 the there is a college the college principal will be the head of the board of governors the previous principal will be member of it members of the society those who employ our graduates those who are alumni students staff teachers will all be part of it the major criticism of our system has been that those who are not part of the institution or system they decide on issues of appointments of curriculum like we have the system of uh, affiliating institution so the university decides on the curriculum and tells the colleges to transact it that won't happen the college will have its own committees and at the top will be the board of governors and then would be have will, will be the department committees which will be board of studies where the teacher in the college in collaboration with experts from outside in the vicinity and other areas far flung areas will be members of the board of studies the board of governors will approve this and 
that will become part of it ultimately they will be able to award degree as well initially they will be allowed to transact but perhaps they may not be able to award degree but as their performance increases and they become from teaching institution to teaching and research institution and from teaching and research to research institution they will be allowed to award degree as well so now you can see that the students through their clubs can decide on new courses new curriculum and that can be any area of knowledge it has been made wide open if there is a college in the hinterland in the far flung area rural area perhaps they can have agriculture or sericulture horticulture as uh, clubs ultimately they will become courses and curriculum they will then start teaching these subjects and the faculty would be developed through these exercises once that is there they will have a board of studies which will approve the curriculum and they would be able to transact and ultimately they will be able to award degree as well at the university level the university grants commission has been the apex body for higher education but then uh, there has been a lot of criticism the university grants commission was initially established to disburse the grant that was demarcated for higher education but slowly this body had to take up all the responsibility of governance regulation and all but in that process there were so many regulatory bodies also created specialized bodies like the national council for teacher education all india council for technical education the experience has been that these institutions slipped we had a justice jas verma commission in 2012 which was not very kind to the national council for teacher education and it mentioned that there are about 10000 degree awarding institutions in teacher education which sell degrees for money they do not undertake any ex extensive exercise in teaching learning i must tell you one thing this policy is a very very honest policy it is not shy or of accepting the weaknesses of the system and it also finds solutions to them so if you read 15.2 it says we will close down such institutions which have not really been able to perform and there are about two dozen uh, regulatory bodies in different areas like uh, agriculture in uh, horticulture in um, architecture in technical education teacher education so these bodies will be closed by taking back these acts to the parliament and requesting the parliament to repeal these acts so what happens who regulates this the university grants commission will be converted into a higher education commission of india and all the powers will be vested in this regulatory body which will be a very very strong and powerful body it will have four verticals one of the verticals will be regulatory vertical the other would be accrediting vertical the third will be financing fourth will be general education council which will work on the general quality of education so now what i told you about the institutions that they will have autonomy to decide they cannot really fuzz the curriculum they cannot dilute the syllabus because the general education council of the higher education commission of india will give them guidelines the four verticals that i am mentioning about the regulatory the accrediting the financing and the general education will not be statutory and regulatory bodies as such but they will be light but tight bodies or verticals under the higher education commission of india the members of the these regulatory bodies will keep working as standard setting bodies so let us take the example of all india council for technical education or national council for technical uh, teacher education the body will remain which will be this designing or working on the standards that must be maintained in these areas the nct will work on what should be the quality of teacher education through distance mode through face to face through online education for special education and blah 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 this will go into the council of the higher education commission of india where the the, the members of the these bodies the standard setting bodies will also be members so now you can see that presently the autonomy that is snatched from the higher education body 
will be vested or reinstated in these bodies. This is how the system always worked. But then it's, it slowly slipped because UGC, uh, UGC assumed a lot of powers and these bodies were also created through acts of parliament and uh, they had their own regulation. Now another question that I mentioned I would uh, take up later is that how will we get students in the colleges which will have or who will have uh, interest in areas where we do not have at the moment scope for studies in higher education. The whole curriculum and the structure of school education is also changing. What is said about school education? The first thing is that education in all Indian languages will be provided at the lower primary level. Look, at the moment we have only 26.3% participation of the relevant age group in higher education, which is a shame. That means school education has failed 74%. We need to revamp the higher education and uh, school education because we, we studied and found, found out in 2015 there was a subcommittee of the Central Advisory Board on Education set up to study the problem of out of school children. I had the privilege of being a member of it. We traveled across the country, talked to children, talked to parents and found, asked them, why did you drop the school? Every child invariably told us, kuch samaj mein nahi aata tha. ये बच्चे अपने स्कूलों में जा रहे थे उन्हीं के एरिया के स्कूलों में जा रहे थे और फिर भी इनको समझ में क्यों नहीं आ रहा था हम जानते हैं होशंगाबाद में एक बड़ा एक्सपेरिमेंट किया गया था उसमें भी यही हुआ था बच्चों को हिंदी में पढ़ाया गया हिंदी में किताबें तैयार की गई जो ट्राइबल बच्चे थे लेकिन साल के अंत में इन लोगों ने कहा कि कुछ समझ में नहीं आया इसलिए छोड़ दिए स्कूल लुक वी हैव नियरली हंड्रेड फिफ्टी लैंग्वेजेज विच है मोर देन टेन थाउजेंड स्पीकर बट वी डू नॉट प्रोवाइड लोअर प्राइमरी एजुकेशन इन दीज सब्जेक्ट्स I am from Bihar. I, I I'm not a speaker of Hindi. My mother tongue is Maghi. Imagine my plight when I went to school for the first day and the teacher started teaching in Hindi. What would be the plight of the child who is a Santhali speaker or a Khadiya speaker and goes to school and the teacher teaches in Hindi, believing that all Jharkhand is Hindi speaking? This this was the major region for children dropping out of school. The policy says. All children will be brought to school at the age of three. At the moment, we start schooling at the age of six and go up to 18 years. What happens to children from those families who do not have the resources to put their child in a play school or a creche at the age of three? The children of the rich and the affluent are in a teaching learning situation right from age three. The policy says we will have Anganwadis and other similar institution because we will have to convert Anganwadis into teaching learning centers. At the moment, they are just child care centers where you have workers, not teachers taking care of them. So that will be revamped. And now we expect a large number of children to join Anganwadis and similar play school, which would be known as the foundation and come up to the middle and secondary level. What are we going to do? In the foundation level, we are going to let them play with toys and imagine the world and understand the world. Just to mention very quickly, we had a great tradition of toys. We let them die because we had to import uh, toys from China. Everybody wanted to import uh, toys from China, which I will not analyze. You, have, you can understand yourself. What we have decided is, or the policy says, we will collect all the different types of toys of the country, work on them and distribute it to all the Angarwadis where children will play with these toys. I must compliment the Honorable Prime Minister. It was his idea that we must revive the culture of toys in this country. We already have organized two toy thons in the country. So these toys would be revived and children will play with them. Now they come to middle school. You can understand, they will be learning in their own languages, playing with the toys which are local, which have local realities, and then they will go to middle school, where they will be introduced to second language. And I won't de deal with more. They will be allowed to study any subject, any area of knowledge that, that, that has been our tradition. When they go to middle, they will have to do NCC. 
मौका होगा ये गेम्स एंड स्पोर्ट्स भी कर सकते हैं ये माउंटेनियरिंग और क्लाइंबिंग भी कर सकते हैं ये स्पोर्ट्स भी ले सकते हैं ये डांस भी ले सकते हैं ये म्यूजिक भी ले सकते हैं या ऐसे सारे विषय जो हम जिसको हम एरियाज ऑफ नॉलेज कहते हैं जिसको हम चौसठ कलाएं कहते थे वो सब पढ़ सकते हैं पढ़ सकते हैं क्यों संगीत एक पढ़ने का विषय नहीं हो क्यों डांस एक पढ़ने का विषय नहीं हो तो आप अब देख सकते हैं दैट दिस पॉलिसी इज इन कॉन्टिन्यूम राइट फ्रॉम एज थ्री वेन चिल्ड्रेन कम टू स्कूल दे विल बी इंट्रोड्यूस्ड इन टू टॉयज एंड अदर एक्टिविटीज विच आर लोकल विच हैज लोकल फॉर and which will ultimately convert into or translate into something that they can see the relevance in the society when they go up they can choose their own subjects so imagine a girl who is 8 years and is interested in dance so she can say i will take dance but i like mathematics so i'll do mathematics and economics or painting or any other subject two languages and she can continue with that what will happen when the girl goes to secondary she will pass with secondary uh, 10th or 12th we have done away with the 10th board the policy says it will be a four year secondary education so 12th this girl will pass with dance mathematics and painting who will be this child she will be a dancer who will be giving performances in the society she can uh, uh, work on the internet arrange her programs in towns or cities or even abroad perhaps if we have 1 lakh such boys and girls coming up with good training in dance painting agriculture or other areas they can become global best dancers they will go to higher education now there also they can do dance as a subject and start researching on it i have not taken up the issue of uh, multiple entry and exit but then perhaps after doing 2 years of studies in dance she can exit the system practice it for a couple of years come back and join the third year this is the autonomy that the students want i have been talking to students and say why was not it why was this not there when i was a student they are feeling jealous so in the times to come perhaps we will find a student who joins us foundation stage uh, institution will start playing with toys or doing things which he or she likes take a case of carpentry a child gets interested in working with uh, wood and carpentry and that is why what we have said is in the school 10 days of bagless attachment will be done In, in an industry or elsewhere so perhaps the child goes to a carpenter shop floor and stays there for 10 days watching the carpenter and gets interested so during the school days one will make simple simple artifacts or simple furniture perhaps when one goes to secondary will start designing new furniture instead of ikea coming into india perhaps indian sharma and furniture will go global so this child will go to the higher education and start working on it after 2 years exit the system establish one's own um, shop floor or company work for 2 3 4 years come back and do the third year look at the autonomy that is in built in the system now the child can come back in the third year after a few years what happens if the child does four years and goes out one can work with it write a report on the experiences submit it and get a masters degree it's it will not be compulsory any more to study for 5 years 3 years undergraduate 2 year post graduate and then get a, a masters degree one can submit a report on the basis of one's experiences and get a degree however if one wants to continue one can continue with integrated 5 year program look at the flexibility i will quickly mention uh, about the flexibility in teacher education the the policy has now made it compulsory based on the mohammad akhtar siddiqui committee report that the teacher education will be four year compulsory and 2030 onwards every teacher who wants to join a teaching profession will have to have a four year degree program but then someone who has done graduation and never knew about or never got interested about in teaching passes the graduation and that's get inter interested in the school like giju bhai vadeka who was a lawyer but suddenly got interested in schooling and came to a school and said let me teach so 
the provision for them is also open. Two years of BA program, they can join. Or somebody who is an established musician or a painter, and he or she wants to go and work with young children to inculcate all these in the, in, in, in competencies in children. What happens to them? Would he or she not be allowed? They will have to do one year BA. Look at the flexibility and autonomy of the system. They can do that, one year BA and come and join a teaching profession. They may not be teaching, teaching the regular subjects, but then they would be teaching the areas of arts and creative areas. Similarly, someone who, who is who is good in army or things like that can also come. I would also like to mention one great element that has been infused in this. Why would those who have done great contribution to society and areas of knowledge cannot not join teaching like somebody who has been in the army or who is a retired doctor or an engineer they have great knowledge corpus they have great experience we have built in a system of mentorship they would be able to join a school they will be joining a school or college and be there for school perhaps those who are relevant for school education for those who are relevant for higher education they can come and join and stay there and contribute philanthropy has been a great strength of indian education the society supported the education system. We never had government imposing. The government wants and intends to come out of it. I am sure you would have read it, but then read 9.2H, suboptimal governance and leadership of higher education. The government has no intention to control education. It wants to give that autonomy and let the professionals experiment with the students and come up so the local college will do it i'm sure um, we don't have much time i would like to take your questions and answer your questions because there's so much about national education policy that can be talked about and there are so many questions but i will only end by summarizing right from age 3 to age 22 23 the student will have the autonomy to decide on subjects that one would like to do, the way one would like to do, the teacher will have the autonomy to decide on curriculum with the support of the General Education Council, which will be a body of experts and which will be continuously working on different areas. Thus, these bodies will be light but tight. That's the expression that the NEP uses, light but tight. At the moment, we have very heavy bodies which decide on many things. No, this, the, the Higher Education Commission of India verticals will be light, but they will be working with experts in different areas and they will be giving very exact or um, specific guidelines to departments to work on. So we don't expect the curriculum of the local colleges, the small colleges, we do not have many staff members to slip, but with the help of GEC, they will be designing their curriculum. I hope you can get the feel of it. At the end, I will say, this is the shortest policy after McCauley's Minutes. McCauley's Minutes was nine pages. It's just 62 pages. Please read it. Must read it. And read it many times. There are many things put in between the lines. You must read it between the lines and appreciate. It has the teacher center stage. Ye niti sikshak ko kendra bindu mein rakhti hai. मैं अगर कोई सीक्रेट रिवील नहीं कर रहा हूं जब हम लोग काम कर रहे थे इस नीति पर और लोग गए प्रधानमंत्री जी को दिखाने के लिए तो प्रधानमंत्री जी का एक ही विचार था शिक्षक ही देश को बदलेगा उसी पर भार दो वही करेगा हम नहीं ऑन सेवेंथ ऑफ अगस्त एट डेज आफ्टर द पॉलिसी वॉज अप्रूव बाई देंट्रल कैबिनेट ऑन ट्वेंटी नाइन जुलाई ही एड्रेस द टीचर्स फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम एनी प्राइम मिनिस्टर एंड ही टोल्ड द टीचर्स वी हैव गिवेन यू द पॉलिसी but it is your policy you have to own it it is our policy friends teachers fellow teachers let us own it and let us implement it it's a great policy which will transform india into bharat 2040 and which will be autonomous like the dream institution of any country so, so, thank question. you very much samaji for a very interesting presentation it has been very interesting and they have been also interesting questions. So let me clarify a few points to you. There have been common um, questions about the program, about equivalency and so on and so forth. Let me spell out a few points 
and then we will get into your question and answer. Mm -hmm. So there was one question, of course, 12th we are opening up the test. It will continue up to 17th. And 30% of wet is with 15 multiple choice questions is the discussion forum. Discussion forum, I'll talk about that. And 70% is the end program, which will also open up. And uh, anytime you can do 35 multiple choice questions, all put together 50 multiple choice questions of two marks each, 100 marks, but we'll be converting that into mark as well as the grade system as per the UGC HRDC formulation. About the discussion forum, when it will start, discussion forum you can get into because you are asking questions from the Swayam Prabha chart system or the Swayam discussion forum. On the, I'm told, on the top of it, the right hand side top of it, there is a, 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 an icon that uh, uh, ask a question. So in the discussion forum, you can ask a question also. The discussion forum question is already given to you about pedagogy, curriculum, technology, skilling and employability. As a teacher, how would you like to utilize and transform your teaching and learning? That's almost your, your own experience and your proposition that how we would like to proceed with ABNEP 2020, that's the discussion forum question. So you start responding to discussion forum question because discussion forum is already opened and from our side, our colleagues joining together one by one at home, they could also respond to questions. If a question has been responded, we will try to respond to another question and so on and so forth because there will be so many of you, 6,400, so we have to respond to those on time. Some of the very relevant questions, if you have simply expressed something and which doesn't need a response, we may not. But uh, that doesn't mean that uh, we disagree with you, we agree with you. So discussion forum would lead to 15 MCQs, which are based on discussion forum generally, and 35 questions based on the entire National Education Policy 2020, 14 units. Uh, some of you have written that the units you are not able to locate, they are very much on, on, on the page, home page there. You get into materials, 14 units in English and Hindi, only one unit, four is not available in Hindi, but uh, uh, all are available, and 31 videos are available. And some of you, I repeat, have written that if we have missed, how do we access the Swayam Prabha conferencing videos? The Swayam Prabha conferencing videos will be archived with a link on the, on the Swayam Swayam platform itself, you can uh, with, with the title that the archive videos and uh, with the onward by Sansu's videos yesterday, uh, day before yesterday, Professor Jha yesterday, Professor uh, uh, Shamaji uh, today, and my trial run video, which is already running in the YouTube, would also be archived and will continue archiving. And you can access those, download those, and proceed. Then, uh, uh, of course, you, as I said, you have to get into Samat. To join that, I have given you the URL, or you can contact our regional center of your respective state. They will immediately provide or write to us in the email that is provided. NEP, uh, uh, Dr. Wesley, NEP. So the email of NEP. NEP hyphen PDP at igno dot ac dot in. NEP hyphen PDP all small, at the red, IGNOU dot AC dot in. There is also, is there any attendance? Of course, uh, uh, you're coming and going, it will be known by us since we are handling the system, but that doesn't necessarily mean that all the time you have to enter and exit and be there, but as and when you find time, you can also get access and uh, download materials and study on your own. You need not enter, download the videos, and when you have to do discussion forum, you can enter the system. And when you do the test, you can enter the system. And Swayam Prabha, you need not enter the system. You can do the Swayam Prabha from the URL that is already communicated to you. For all the days, the same URL will work. So this is about attendance. Is this professional development program equivalent to refresher? Let me spell you out. Nowadays, unlike the orientation and the refresher of yesteryears, the UGC, HRDC, those were the academic staff colleges. Eh? So the HRDC, and we as tried, which is now equivalent to HRDC, we are conducting this program. The, and therefore, your certificate will be equivalent to UGC HRDC certificates. Let me spell out. There are three types of programs that the UGC offers in terms of professional development. One is an induction program, which is a 28 days program, full time um, uh, residential. Equivalent is ARPIT, ARPIT of online, 28 days. 
The second program is a 12 days, um, two weeks um, 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 uh, refresher program. And uh, uh, unlike the earlier refresher, so this is a, uh, that, that is 28 days, this is 12 days refresher. And the third one is a six days, 36 hours professional development program, short term professional development program. And this is, this program is equivalent to the six days short term professional development program. So therefore, in your API, CES or whatever purpose, that you, this will add to your six days professional development program. You have to clarify from the regulation if two STPs will be equivalent to one refresher, I'm not pretty sure, but then you have to also access that the UGC regulation and find out and find out from the HRDC whether this will be equivalent. The, 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 the other question, let me finish and then get into Sama, get, get, get with Samaji. That uh, uh, some of you have written, and one uh, uh, animus Mondal has written, uh, Swami Vivekananda, and uh, Ami Bustabari, and so, but you have written in English, by the way. So, um, uh, so you said that NAP 2020 conforms to what already Swami Vivekananda has already said. You are absolutely right. He said, he used the word man, which involve, includes men and women, bring out the best already inherent in man. That's what he said. That's what I've written. You have not written. Uh, but you said that it is equivalent. Of course, it is absolutely equivalent because it talks about each child as an important child. Our teaching learning has to proceed with the individual pathways and learning style of each child. So therefore, you are absolutely right. And uh, uh, let me complete one more and then get into uh, the, the questions relating to today's session. Uh, in this doctor, you have written that multidisciplinary courses uh, could also lead to marketization or market driven courses. Let me clarify one thing, and one of you have a, has also written, I must add to that, that if a student, our student is allowed to take science courses, or a science student is allowed to ask courses, uh, uh, it doesn't look nice. That, that's what you said. But let me spell out both of these. In multidisciplinary, uh, both are related to each other. In multidisciplinary, a student has to take almost 50% core subjects from your discipline, thus must. But besides core, as my presentation or my video you would like to see, or my unit that you would like to see, unit 4, or my video on the curriculum pedagogy that you will see, that a student could, has to necessarily take up courses which are social and life skills, evaluated courses, the courses which are skill-based, ability enhancement, uh, uh, apprenticeship or internship courses, and the courses which are community engagement, courses which are environmental, environmental awareness, environmental education, and so on and so forth, besides gender equality, and so on and so forth, all put together, and 40% or, or sorry, 40 credits, which is 25% of the 160 credits for the undergraduate program, is devoted to research skills. So social and life skills and research skills are very important. I will come back to the indigenous knowledge question that you have asked, but side by side, let me say that if a student of arts is allowed to take a music course, which is belong to arts, in any case, some a student of arts would like to take a cyber security course, for instance, which is outside one's own discipline, beyond 50% of the, of the core discipline area, that one is allowed to take courses from other disciplines one, to enhance one's own employability, one, uh, enhance one's own ability to, 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 to be a good citizen in this country or elsewhere uh, 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 in the community. Two, increase employability. Three, that to increase one's own worldview and awareness of diverse wide fields of study. And four, some people would like to study for their leisure, would you like to, would you, or their person, would you like to stop them? You should provide it. So we have developed disciplinary blindedness that we are confined to our own discipline, whereas all disciplines comprising together is the knowledge base. We have divided into disciplines and research and structured that as the knowledge base of that discipline, but all put together is the knowledge. And uh, our traditional knowledge uh, uh, was uh, uh, integrated, so therefore, NEP is talking about holistic as well as integrated. With this, let me finish, and I'm pretty sure Unless you are, uh, somebody is falling into the trap, it will never lead to marketization because the teachers have the absolute freedom and the autonomy, institutions have all absolute autonomy not to fall into the trap. And we as uh, public people, as public servants, as teachers and administrators, we need to look as governments. 
we need to look into this, that we develop free open education resources, including 40% credit that you can take from soil. And read my unit, quite a few other agriculture management technology free resources have been quoted over there. You can access those websites. So, um, uh, marketization, because market, the other question was if the market industry is involved in developing skill based courses, it may lead to marketization. I would disagree with that because you have the freedom to engage them to develop your courses and implement in the skill development centers and the tryouts through apprenticeship and internship. It doesn't necessarily mean it will need to commercialization and marketization. Marketization is not that bad a word as commercialization is and therefore we have to we have to be very careful with that let me come back to the questions one is how indian knowledge system makes way to indian education system as soon as possible very good question perhaps i have answered that question that look there are areas of uh, bharti gyan parampara which are not part of the knowledge corpus for reasons i think all of you know it did not shoot the British and after independence those who were in government were not much inclined or they, they didn't have much interest in it. So they were out of the knowledge corpus and that is why this policy for the first time says Bharat ki chosat kalao ko hum sthaan denge aur unme hum vidya parampara aur shodh parampara ko aage padhaenge. The knowledge corpus will be introduced as clubs initially, they will start working as the corpus is accumulated, but as they can convert into department discipline and then uh, start imparting or evolving degrees. So it will be a gradual process, but that will come. And that is why I told you, when uh, the Prime Minister addressed, he said, ye India centric Bharat, ko India centric education nahi, ye Bharat ke hogi. To hum Bharat ke jitne bhi gyan hain, un sab ko विद्यालय और महाविद्यालय के परंपरा में लाएंगे उनके काम कार्य क्षेत्र में लाएंगे और बनेंगे इंडिया भारत बनेगा दूसरा एक मिलीजुली प्रश्न है चार पांच प्रश्नों को मैं साथ रखता हूं एक तो यह कि जो स्टूडेंट्स वर्नाकुलर स्कूल में पढ़ेंगे जो पढ़ भी रहे हैं उनको हायर एजुकेशन अंग्रेज में दिक्कत आता है तो उसके क्या प्रावधान होगा एक प्रश्न यह है क्योंकि हायर एजुकेशन भी रीजनल लैंग्वेज में हो एक प्रश्न यह है Dosra hai ke how to teach English, not that English methodology methods of teaching, but the question is, can we use mother tongue to teach English? Can we use Hindi or Tamil or something to teach English? That is the second question. Third, how to implement Sanskrit language in our system? And uh, of course, the, what are the new methods of teaching language? And uh, the next question was, that if mother tongue, then why so many English medium schools? If mother tongue has to become the primary, in so many English medium schools, especially the kindergarten schools, why so many are there? And therefore, what will be the teacher's role in NEP 2020 in so far this is concerned? And what will be the autonomy of the students in so far this is concerned? <laughs> Angrezi ko bagal me rakha gaya hai. I, I, I must share with you, uh, you have asked the question that why higher education only in English. Last year itself, 2020, we had the national education policy release. 2021 itself, higher education, technical education was started in several Indian languages. We didn't do it for 75 years. Why? Did we not know that these languages have great strength? We said this. This was said in policies even before independence, read Sergeant Commission. What happened to the government after 1947? Pranamantri is a very good thing. They say, they are not going to be able to do it. They are not going to be able Now, to answer your question, all Indian languages are equal, including English. Those who want to study English will not be denied that opportunity. But then, why force English upon those who find it much difficult to access it? So perhaps a child who knows Hindi will continue with Hindi right up to the PhD level. And we will develop corpus. We have already done it. Tamil, mein, Telugu, mein, Ma Ma Marathi, mein, technical education ka content is ready for those who are two years ago. Why do we not do this in 75 years? So, look at the mind. Now, why 
foundation in mother tongue because children dropped i have explained already to you children dropped out of school because they could not understand the language of the schooling first five years is only a process of schooling and not really transaction of content so they will be retained in the school i told you that about four crore children are out of school way out of school when the, the policy was launched in 2020 why in spite of sarshiksha abhiyan and millions spent on bringing children to school why were they out of school because mother tongue was not introduced so don't look at it as santhali being developed as a language up to phd level although there are people are doing the phd in santhali that language has already been developed so what i would say all languages including english but nobody will be forced not to study english or to study english if one wants to do phd right up to phd in uh, akhamia or mithi or ho one would be allowed to do that we will develop all languages for that a mission has already been established a mission on translation and a mission on technical education which has already been established friends iske sath ek main jod do ek do sab ऐसा कोई भी देश नहीं है हमारा साउथ एशिया को छोड़ के बराबर है कल्चर तो एक ही है फ्रॉम साउथ इंडिया लेट मी आल्सो स्पेल आउट इन इंग्लिश देयर इज नो कंट्री अदर देन दिस साउथ एशियन कंट्रीज हु हैव नेवर फॉलोड देयर एजुकेशन सिस्टम और नॉट बेस्ड देयर एजुकेशन सिस्टम ऑन देयर कल्चर ट्रेडिशन वैल्यूज लैंग्वेज जर्मन जर्मन फ्रेंच फ्रेंच सो यू टेक एनी एनी कंट्री रशियन रशियन so and as south americans non english language so on and so forth we count world countries we have been influenced by the british uh, english language or good thing that we learn the language we connect it with the world but the whole lot of education system has been disturbed by such uh, uh, past discourses therefore uh, curriculum and other policies so therefore i would submit main ye kehna chahta hu ki जर्मन अगर जर्मन भाषा में पढ़ के विश्व का कई मामले में पहला बन सकते हैं तो हम हिंदी अपनी मातृभाषा में पढ़ के क्यों नहीं बन सकते हैं और उसके लिए रिसोर्सेज की जरूरत हो और वो रिसोर्सेज डेवलप हो रही है जैसे शर्मा जी ने कहा एक नेशनल मिशन के तहत तो डेवलप हो रही है हो सकता है कोई ओपन एजुकेशन रिसोर्स कॉपी फ्री उसको हम ट्रांसलेट करें ऐसा प्रावधान चल रहा है रिसोर्सेज की कमी हो सकती है बहुत सारे इंग्लिश टीचर्स जानते हैं तो मातृभाषा और दूसरी भाषा बोल नहीं पाते ये भी हकीकत है इंग्लिश सिस्टम का इन्फ्लुएंस है तो हम मातृभाषा भूल गए हैं हिंदी को ढंग से बोल नहीं पाते हैं और वो सरल भाषा में हो कोई ट्रांसलेटेड भाषा में ना हो तो इसलिए ये मातृभाषा यूनिवर्सिटी डॉक्टर डिग्री और आगे तक इसका चलना चाहिए कोई इंग्लिश को मना नहीं कर रहा इंग्लिश के साथ साथ जर्मन फ्रेंच रशियन चाइनीज सब पढ़िए चाइनीज हिंदी पढ़ रहे हैं हम चाइनीज पढ़ रहे हैं क्योंकि दिस टू आर गोइंग टू बिकम वेरी प्रोमिनेंट कंट्रीज इन द फ्यूचर एंड सो एंड सो फोर्थ तीन चार प्रश्न को ऑटोनोमी के बारे में मैं जोड़ देता हूं हो सकता है ये लास्ट क्वेश्चन हो उसके बाद हमारा और क्वेश्चन लास्ट पेज है मैं भी एक्सेस कर रहा हूं आपकी क्वेश्चन को एक चीज है कि क्राइटेरिया फॉर ग्रांटिंग ऑटोनोमी टू कॉलेजेस पहली बात दूसरी बात कि साहब ये व्हाट अबाउट फंडिंग ऑफ हायर एजुकेशन इंस्टीट्यूशन इफ ऑटोनोमी इज गिवन टू द कॉलेजेस विल देयर बी गवर्नमेंट फंडिंग व्हाट फी फॉर हायर एजुकेशन इफ कॉलेजेस आर ऑटोनोमस विल दे डिसाइड फी विल दे इंक्रीज फी एग्जॉर्बिटेंट फ्री एज इट इज हैपनिंग टू and finally related to that will medical education will also which is too costly come under the higher education commission of india uh, so should i answer no uh-huh, please look i have not taken up the issue of financing of uh, education but just to give you a feel hamari parampara the whole indian system of education was based on the support from the society the support the society was pushed out only when the government wanted to take control after the british policy on education hamare vidyarthi to bhikshu ban ke jate the samaj se bhiksha mang ke laate the aur log khushi khushi dete the kyunki hum samaj ko hi serve karte hain academia se who do we serve for whom are we we are for the society and if, if society is not worried about us who would do that this policy intends to promote philanthropy through which the educational institutions will be supported Remember one thing: we have been saying six percent of GDP must be spent on education. It has not been spent. 
This policy also repeats that we will spend six percent. But I have great doubts. Money, government doesn't have money for it. But the society is interested in education. They will support financing of education and how philanthropy will be promoted in the Bharatiya context. Will have we will have to discuss on a different uh, platform and a different uh, day. But today I have not taken up. However, whether the UGC will fund or who will fund and will there be a regulatory framework for fees? Gujarat government established a commission for this long, long back and they monitor this. Perhaps we need a similar body for the nation. In Gujarat, you will, won't find institutions charging exorbitant fees because they have a body with people from all areas, public, private, institution, and they have a very, very egalitarian solution for this. We don't have. And that is why the policy says that we, the public and the private will be both working together. We private private. They serve large section of the society. Why should we treat them like Pariya? Why should we treat them like a step a stepchild? No, they will be on the same platform. They will sit together and they will decide on a judicious fee policy. So this is also said in this, but this was not within the framework of autonomy. So I did not take that, take it up. So friends, one observation before we conclude, <clears throat> because I've also been a chairperson of NCTE. There is a very particular question I didn't ask Ramaji, though this is his forte, because I have dealt with regulation, so it could be more forte for me. See, a very simple question, that in teacher education, if, let me read out, and eh, Dr. Uh, uh, Sunagar, uh, Gandhi Gepa Sunagar, you have written, in teacher education, we have already art and drama subject, but how we can integrate music in the same discipline. Let me spell you out, irrespective of the Justice, Honorable Chief Justice of India, the then Chief Justice, Justice Drama Commission, even art education existed earlier in the teacher education curriculum, and there were two bifurcations in that, which is a visual art, and the other one is a performing art. And we said one art teacher in the school, we need in fact two. One for visual art, which is very different from the performing art. So, if you are doing a visual art, the music is a performing art. Because music, theater, drama, they are, they are, and painting, visual art, and so on and so forth. So, you can very well integrate music education into the curriculum under performing art. The second point is information that it just came to my mind that I must inform you insofar as this multidisciplinarity in a uh, standalone institution they have to convert into almost 10,000 teacher education and almost uh, 12 to 13,000 that NEP has uh, pointed out they need to be either closed down or they have to convert into multidisciplinary institutions. They would not remain a standalone and that will be done over a period of time and the time duration has also been mentioned. I must mention just two days back or three days back, a document from UGC has finally come out. Combination of two committees, which is about multidisciplinary institutions and multidisciplinary departments. And the second committee was chaired by our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Nagasur Rauji, in which uh, I was also a member of the committee. And those two have been combined in that document, and the document is out. And you should get hold of a copy of that document because those eventually become regulations in the future. And uh, 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 the Higher Education Commission of India coming up, and these, all these, including choice based credit system, outcome based learning, open distance learning regulations, uh, 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 international overseas uh, cross border educational de delivery regulations, so all these that have come up. Uh, multiple entry and exit, multidisciplinary, all these would eventually become part of that. They, we, they will not be drawn, they can be modified in the future. So with this, I thank you, Professor Samaji, for My a very privilege. interesting and a very well-articulated and uh, uh, presentation. And uh, uh, we have exactly uh, finished uh, within one hour. We, we are very sorry that we started 10 minutes late because of our little technical hitch. So, and uh, we have finished about 4.10, which is one hour. And if you have more questions, you please uh, 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 ask in the, in the uh, SOEM discussion forum uh, that, that is already open. And I repeat that discussion forum right hand side corner, you have that uh, 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 discussion forum uh, open, ask a question. So you can enter there, you can uh, respond to that because uh, you will be sitting through the test 
which is 15 multiple choice questions, 30% weightage. And from uh, 12th uh, onwards, it will be, be open and then you can uh, continue to do that and the tests would continue up to 17. So you'll be given three days more, six plus three days, nine days to complete the tests. We will insist that you tell your colleagues also spread the message if you like that they should also get into and register in the summer portal uh, through our regional centers. Summer portal is one, but then our regional centers will cross check your I card if you are a teacher and so on and so forth. No issue at all. And they will upload and we'll take up and then provide you messages to join in the next batches. Please do it fast as fast as possible. You can also give, give preference to your uh, dates where you would like to join, for instance, or the message goes you are not able to join, you can join the next batch also. You could indicate that and join the, your enrollment or the confirmation number remains the same. So thank you very much once again. Sarmaji, thank you. Namaskar. Thank you very much. Jai Hind, Jai Bharat.